Hey, welcome to the closing beat, everybody. How's it going today? Happy, happy Wednesday. Hope you're having a great day here so far. This is just a quick show that we do, our stock market update show. Uh, we call it the closing beat. Just have some fun there, make fun of the other shows on TV. We're financial advisors here at Jazz Wealth. Hope you keep us in mind, actually. We manage long-term retirement accounts, long-term investment accounts. We manage our own portfolios here, so you can see the performance and everything right on the website. If you'd like, if you have any questions, you know where to find us. It says it right there on the shirt. Anyways, we're also playing a game called Guess the Dow, uh, jazzwealth.com forward slash guess the Dow. If you want to play along, no strings attached, no purchase necessary, no marketing involved at all. Just place your guess. If you're the closest without going over, we'll send you a $100 gift card. And if you're one of our customers like our winner last week, we'll just credit your account $100 and it does not count towards your IRA contributions, Roth IRA contributions for the year, things like that. We also have a class tomorrow night for our customers. We do a class every week for our uh, customers, also recorded, but we do them live on Thursday nights. And tomorrow night I will be um, sharing data with them about recessions and performance and everything that will make you pray for a recession and not be scared of it. So I'm going to show you all the geeky data in two really simple layouts. If I have my way, I'll get it to two simple layouts to show you why uh, you actually really, really want a recession. At worst case, you just won't be scared of them there. So uh, that's what we do here. I like to share data with you. I always do on this show here as well, try to share stuff with you that maybe uh, you didn't know before. So uh, we'll try to go through that as well. Here's the Dow, uh, 200, uh, sorry, 22 points to the downside, five to the downside on the S&P. The NASDAQ lost 24, a lot of tech names pulled back a little bit today. And um, all in all, it was kind of like an okay day. And then retail sales numbers came out and they pulled back a little bit. Actually, it was the worst uh, result since January of this year. They fell 0.3%. We were expecting them to grow 0.3%. But what they didn't tell you is that uh, this is normal, right? And in fact, uh, here we go. Uh, we'll try to do this on the fly. This could be a disaster. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, U.S. retail sales. Here we go. So this, what you're seeing on the charts there, is the retail sales. So we got a recent pullback here. This was the dip that we uh, did not want to see. We were expecting it to uh, move higher. But if we look back, we can go back. Well, let's go back five years first just to take a look. Here's our pullback here. We go back to the same time last year. There's your pullback there. Typical calmness before the holiday season, if there's going to be an exciting holiday season. Uh, last year, we didn't see it. We basically just went flat there before the holiday season. Year before that, got a little bit, oh, no, sorry. There you go. Year before that, you got a little bit of flatness before the holiday season took off there. And the year before that, a little bit of uh, flatness before the holiday season. You can go back as far as you want. You can see that this is very much normal for this time of year here. Any year you want to look at the same area as far as the report goes, you just see calmness there, right? It doesn't mean that there's going to be consumer spending into the, uh, well, into the um, holiday season, but it just means that this is normal, man. It's totally, totally normal. By the way, if you're paying attention to how it breaks down, retail sales breaks down into a number of different areas. Building materials was the worst performer. Auto parts and dealers were second worst performer. Gas stations, second worst performer. Sporting goods were pretty bad in there. Um, there were more negative areas of retail sales than there were positive areas. So it wasn't bad, it just wasn't awesome, and it was pretty much quiet uh, as we look at it there. Now, the sectors that have had some of the worst performance there, uh, sporting goods now down three reports in a row, uh, general merchandise down two reports in a row, auto parts and dealers won. Um, the best performing area is uh, nine uh, quarters in a row, and that'd be bars and restaurants. So they're still kicking strong there, uh, at least this go around. We'll see what happens, right? So that's retail sales, although it looks negative and you could very easily read a whole bunch of stuff to make you think like the consumer is all of a sudden done. Remember, the consumer makes up 68% of the overall U.S. GDP, right? So if the consumer slows down, that slows down our economy. So that's the kind of narrative that was out there today, like, oh my gosh, the consumer is slowing down. They normally do. Christmas is coming up. They're like, why am I going to buy you something? Got Christmas and all the holidays that you celebrate coming up. I'll just buy it then and uh, give it, give the gift then. So, and there's really no exciting holidays, Halloween, candy, whatever. Uh, but anyway, so that's what was going on there. Uh, it didn't really get talked about a whole lot there. Also, mortgage applications uh, came out today. Small uptick there, only up a half a percent. Uh, remember, last week they were up 5.4%, so a big uptick last week. Not so much this week, but still positive, so everybody's pretty much happy. Let's go over to the, uh, well, let's look at the markets here. Can we do that? Yeah, we can do that. 
I know how to do that. <laughs> S&P 500 basically flat on the day, stuck between recent highs and this uptrend line that we know we can count on now, right? We know everybody's looking at this uptrend line. It's been held, it's held as support now three times here going forward. So everybody's gonna use that. We'll extend it just so you have what you need there in case we do uh, come back down there. And we'll go ahead and you can see the highs, but we'll stretch that out as well. That's where everybody's focused right now. This is our range until we break above or below that. There's no major decisions to be made. Uh, you're sort of in a holding pattern, really, uh, for the S&P 500. If you look at the NASDAQ, it's very much similar. you got a similar uptrend there. We've passed the known resistance area. That'll become support on the way down. And you have the sort of series of highs here. It's not great, but uh, you got all-time highs still floating there on the NASDAQ. And same on the Dow. One little caveat. Caveat? There we go. I just want to draw the line. If you just stick with me here. Hang on. We're going to do this. Is going to be great. <laughs> There we go. Yeah, there we go. So we got new highs uh, just drawing it there on the Dow. I don't talk about that one enough. So there you have it. Um, as far as the overall sectors go today, you had weakness, not real weakness, but sort of a flat day in financials, right? It was sort of an undecided day overall. And you know you need the financials and you need the tech stocks to move the markets higher. Financials never really kicked in. We did have some earnings come out there. We'll cover those in just a minute. And then you also have tech stocks that just started to pull back a little bit. Semiconductors led the way if you want to look in even deeper. The SMH pulled back erasing almost all of what it gained yesterday. Lost one and a half percent. It was the worst performing sector, I believe. Uh, worst performing area of the market out of all of them, I believe. And really that's just because uh, you always start with Taiwan semiconductors, right? This is the biggest holding inside of the SMH or, or the semiconductors. So you always start there and look what happened today. It started off strong, just got a little extended, right? Look how far away it is from its 20 period moving average. A quick study of any chart shows that anytime a stock gets too far away from its 20 period moving average, which is the green line on my chart, uh, it always pulls back or will stay sideways at those highs. Look at how every time it does that. So everybody's looking at that today saying, no, I'm not going to buy at those highs because I know this sucker's going to pull back. Because of that pulling back and being the larger holding in that sector, uh, you had the SMH lower on the day. You had a lot of other stocks in the area there lower as well. I think ASML was the biggest decliner to the downside, bigger player here. Uh, down 5%, so kind of a big reversal there. And because of that, you had the semiconductors weak. When you have tech stocks or semiconductors weak and you have the financials weak, you have a recipe for the S&P 500 that uh, means the recipe says it's not going to do anything. <laughs> it's, it will not be able to go higher without those two sectors. And so that's kind of what happened today. Looking around at some of the other areas, home builders made new highs today. Continue to be really strong. In fact, uh, on the new high list today, there are three home builders. I want to talk about that just when we get there, but uh, that certainly helping the sector overall. Gold miners did well, up about 2% on the day, looking like they're ready to bounce back for a little bit. Uh, so strong gold mining areas there. If you look at the price of gold, I think it was up like three, quarter, yeah, three quarters of a percent. So it had a decent day today. Oil was up just a touch, but most of the energy and oil stocks were actually lower on the day. So kind of a weak attempt there by the energy stocks to do really anything impressive. You look at the XLE, that's a way to look at energy as a whole, or it's an ETF for that. Uh, down 1.4%, so some weakness there. And uh, XOP, which is your explorers, uh, just floating near lows. So even though it was a small uptick in oil today, these oil stocks just not playing along. And uh, back to the financials real quick, your regional banks also stuck at the 200-day moving average. Uh, so something to point out. I mean, there's not a lot there. You'd have thought healthcare would have been more active today after the Democratic debate last night. But it was okay. I mean, it was just basically flat on the day. Um, a lot of analysts are starting to shift their mindset towards this being positive, despite the political season coming up. So if that's something you track, you know, maybe, maybe it's something you look at there. Um, re uh, weak retail sales numbers uh, didn't really hurt the consumer discretionary area. It was still uh, decent. Right, up about a half a percent on the day. And that's basically all I have for your sectors. Individual stocks, General Motors apparently worked out a deal with the UAW. Uh, they call it a proposed tentative deal. It has a lot of things to go through still, but they're going to vote on this tomorrow and then see how the uh, uh, employees feel about it. They get to vote on that. So uh, potentially a deal. Uh, we'll see. Tomorrow we'll know more on that one, but it's better than nothing. So for the last five weeks, there's been nothing General Motors wise. Uh, today, stock's up about 1% on that news there. You had Bank of America report earnings and, oh, we got to go over Netflix too. Bank of America reported earnings, beat on earnings, beat on revenue there. Uh, hey, a 27% increase in their investment fees that they charge. 27% increase. 
come on, come on over to Jazz, right? If you got a Bank of America account, eh, they're not going to miss you. Come on over to Jazz. Uh, we did not have an increase in our fees. Our fees are right on our website there, so you know exactly what you're getting into. Uh, but Bank of America beat on earnings, beat on revenue, and it had a little bit to do with uh, that big increase in their investment banking fees, meaning more people had accounts there and they just charged more money as it came in the door. So uh, good for them, I guess, but bad for you. Uh, so uh, United Airlines higher 2% on the day, broke above that. What we talk about today or yesterday, if it broke above that, well, today it gapped uh, higher than this downtrend. You got a lot of action in there. So you got a whole lot of volume as people made decisions there, both to exit short positions and to give it a shot long positions. So a uh, decent day for United Airlines. Look pretty good. Beat on earnings. We talked about the revenue yesterday. They guided higher, which is where all the excitement came from because uh, more people are booking on United. You know, as funny as I never think when I'm ready to go somewhere and I'm going to fly, I never think to pick United. I don't know why. Just one of the, I don't, I'm not saying they're a bad airline. It just never crosses my mind. Interactive Brokers reported earnings as well, down two, well, down 3% on the day. Remember, this is one of the brokerage firms that rep, uh, announced no uh, zero commissions. Well, they still charge commissions, but they have a division now, which is um, they call uh, IBKR Lite, right? So you have the choice to pay commissions or not, right? It depends on what you want. So a little different than some of the other places there. Anyways, the stock was lower on the day. They missed on earnings, missed on revenue, despite being able to charge higher commissions or their uh, commission revenue was higher than expected. Uh, you know, we have no commissions here at Jazz Wealth, so I'll make the pitch again. Come on over, right? It's no commissions. We have our own funds, right? <laughs> I got to sneak it in there, uh, right? And E-Trade reporting tomorrow, so I'll sneak it in there one more time for you guys. Mm, part of the deal, right? You guys would do the same thing. They'll do the thumbs down thing. You would do the same thing. Where are we at here? MGM down a percent and a half on the day. They're selling uh, Bellagio and Circus Circus, but not to the same people. It's two different sales there. I think they're raising $5 billion. The idea was they, they need to pay down debt. So they're very serious about doing that. They're selling uh, those two resorts uh, for $5 billion, I think was the the results there and they're doing it to pay down debt. I'll say it again. If you ever want to learn about how to manage your personal finances, don't watch me on YouTube. I know I do personal finance stuff. I mean, I, of course, watch me. I shouldn't say that. But uh, don't just go watch random videos on YouTube. Go study companies. Go study how companies move money around. Granted, it's in the hundreds of millions or billions of dollars, but watch the actions they take. When do they spend money versus when do they pay down debt? They always spend money when the consumer is, is not spending money, and they always save money when the consumer is spending money. It's the exact opposite, but it's the way you should do it. So really study these companies. There's a lot of great examples out there. IBM was one of the other ones that we talked about in the past on this one. So. Um, Great study on this one if you, if you want to look at it. If you're very serious about paying down your dough and you don't know where to start, just model these companies. They're no dummies. They got the smartest people in the room telling them exactly where to put every single dollar. Hmm? There you go. By the way, we help our customers with that as well. You want to know where to put every single dollar, whether it's invested or not. I'm happy to help. All right, J.B. Hunt, one of the transport companies. You've seen their trucks all over the country. Up 3.6% today. Uh, the stock did really well. Uh, missed on earnings, but revenues beat. Uh, did really, really well there. And because of their uh, uh, good earnings uh, results there, here is the, uh, there it is. There's the IYT. Uh, they make up about 6.5% of the IYT. So JB Hunt does well. You're going to see a little support there. Um, you also have the rails in there as well. CSX did finish down in the red today. They reported earnings and Union Pacific is next there. Um, they, they reported, I think they reported after hours. No, tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so Union Pacific there. Um, actually, that's our stats play for the day. It did hit the goal uh, only in one day. So remember, we, we talked about this yesterday. 65.7% chance that they would be up at least 1.09% in the next five days. It did it all in one day. Uh, so we can get rid of that one. Not saying it's going lower or anything from here. It's just, I just share the stats with you. Do, do with it what you will, if anything. If you just like to play along and uh, just follow along or whatever, that's cool too. Oh, okay, a couple more stocks here and then we're going to move on. Uh, Sleep Number. There you go. Did you know they were a public company? Sleep Number uh, basically finished flat. It started off very much higher today. Just a little extended in the short term. Beat on earnings, beat on revenue, and they... <laughs> So they said, uh, what, this all really stems from the sleep number 360 bed. 
the bed that supposedly you can buy for $9.99. Can't find it for $9.99 though. When you go shopping there, it's $2,000 to $5,000 for a bed with an app on your phone. Anyways, they're apparently selling them like hotcakes there because uh, they beat on earnings. They did really well. Uh, great results there for them. So congratulations, right? I mean, I think it's ridiculous to spend that much on a bed, but yeah. They do what they do. All right, Netflix reporting earnings after the close here. They beat on earnings, missed on revenue, uh, lower subscriber counts. I believe it was 7.6. I just had it. 7.6 uh, million versus 9.3 million uh, was expected. I think the stock is still higher here after hours. Uh, 314-ish. So doing, I told you, that's a big mover. This is the most volatile stock. Um, most volatile stock during earnings here. So if we go... Kind of see where it's at around 314. That's about average, right? 9%. The average uh, gap on this one's 12.78%. Currently, it is right inside the average there. Um, apparently, uh, Reed Hastings was uh, basically owned up to the competition. Said so we expect some headwinds in there were his words, not mine. Uh, owned up to the idea that there's going to be a little competition there, but the competition really doesn't start this year, so they expect next quarter to be okay as well. Um, I didn't catch any comments there on the subscriber miss, uh, but that's two times in a row they missed on subscribers. Difference, there's a big difference between that. Remember last quarter they missed on subscribers? <whistles> big drop there, uh, starting to make up some of that. So congratulations if you own some Netflix, because that's a pretty strong move, as of now at least, to the upside there. We'll cover IBM tomorrow. Um, they, they beat, on, uh, beat on earnings, missed on revenue, uh, cloud growth. That's a big one for them. It was only up 14%. A lot of people were expecting more, but they don't really compete, right? They've been a sort of a, the, the behind the game on their cloud uh, space relative to Amazon and everybody else. But uh, I think that's pretty good. We'll, we'll try to cover some more da uh, data on that tomorrow. 61% of the S&P 500 uh, is above the 50-day moving average. Slight downtick. We were up, uh, it was 63% um, yesterday. So slight downtick there. 14 new highs. Three of them were home builders. We talked about it. Uh, Dr. Horton, Lennar and Pulte Homes. Uh, let's go over here. You have some names like Schwab hitting new highs again. Just staying nice and strong. Very clean, clear, tight uptrend there. Those can go on for a long time. And uh, TJ Maxx. Uh, Dollar Tree was in the mix as well, but TJ Maxx hitting new highs. We happen to own TJ Maxx, so very happy about that performance there. So looking good. And you notice, I want to point this out because you guys go, why does he tell me every day the new highs and lows? That's a simple stat. There's a lot to learn from new highs and new lows. Like, for example, have you noticed I haven't said 11 REITs on the list, right? Oh, there's nine new highs today and seven of them are REITs. There's 15 new highs today and 11 of them are REITs. You notice how that hasn't happened? Well, that's a very quick way for you to go, REITs must be slowing down. What's going on there? They must have flattened out. They must not be participating. That's exactly right, right? The REITs have slowed down at these highs. Still very strong. They've had a great year. But it's a great way to kind of see, um, kind of get a hint as to where the money is moving there. So that's why I point that stuff out. No new lows on the day. Uh, uh, Nectar actually hit new lows yesterday, reversed 10%. Today it was up another 1.5%. So just people trying to pick the bottom on that one. Tiny bit of short covering and maybe some people finding value there. Although, I, I mean, do you see where the stock came from? Look at 110 bucks, right? A week later, they get added in the S&P, and that killed them. <laughs> so the stock was, I mean, I'm not laughing at them, but stock got crushed there. Uh, so that's that one. You want another stats play? Here we go. Uh, Teleflex, uh, these guys make medical, like actual medical devices and equipment and stuff, like not like computerized, but they make a lot of the medical stuff that you use there. 69.8% uh, of the time, when it's where it's at now, as oversold as it is, uh, you have, well, 69.8% of chance of it being higher by at least 1.45% minimum in the next five days. So if we take today's close, we go up, basically we're saying we're going to reverse. I know they're all small moves right now, I'm sorry, but that is, uh, that's just the market the way it is, kind of coiled up, not doing a whole lot. So you got to go right here, basically to 328 and a quarter. I'll draw a line for you. We'll see what happens there. Pricey stock, but that's what's out there right now. You start looking up a lot of these stats. If you if you look over all the stocks that maybe you're into, um, what you're going to find is, yeah, there's a 65% chance that it moves higher by like a quarter of a percent. Who's playing for a quarter of a percent? So that's just because of where the markets are at. So I try to share anything that looks interesting, but um, in terms of the maybe a bigger risk to reward there, but that's as good as it gets right now. 
Uh, what else do we have? Let's go back to the charts. Uh, Bitcoin continues to move lower, about to hit new lows there. So here's the prior lows on Bitcoin, 76.93 area. It just keeps melting down there. Today was down another two and a quarter percent if you happen to like your Bitcoin. Uh, so that's really all I got there. Tomorrow we got earnings from, well, we got a lot going on. Uh, we got in the morning, Morgan Stanley, they beat 77% of the time on earnings, 74% of the time on revenue. The average gap is 1.01%. So it's not, not crazy, uh, Morgan Stanley. But the last time they missed on earnings, which uh, was in January, first quarter, the last time they missed, uh, the stock was down four point, it gapped down 4.59%. Can I go back to that by chance? Yeah, I can't pull it up. Why is it not coming up? Well, you get what I'm saying, right? So 4.59%, uh, it opened lower after missing earnings. That's the last time they missed on earnings. Otherwise, average gap about 1%. You also got Philip Morris reporting 67% uh, of the time. It's pretty stable. Uh, beats on earnings, 60% beats on revenue. Average gap is next to nothing. It's minus 0.11. So um, not very exciting there. I only point it out because I know some of you have been looking at these uh, coming off lows, Philip Morris and Altria and stuff. So we'll see. I got earnings coming out on that one tomorrow. Their last miss on earnings and revenue was the third quarter of 2017, and the gap was 3% uh, to the upside, right? So see what, see what that does for you. Other than that, yeah, we'll take your questions if you have any. I uh, think we're good there. What else do we have in terms of earning? Honeywell tomorrow. Um, uh, Textron, if you follow that, Union Pacific's in the morning, not in the afternoon. Sorry, I said afternoon. Uh, E-Trade will report after hours. Uh, that'll be interesting just because the new commissions and Intuitive Surgical, uh, ticker symbols ISRG. I don't really follow those, but uh, they're reporting as well. You got three Fed members speaking tomorrow. Uh, that continues. The Fed getting out there, talking, trying to uptalk this market, push those yields higher. Uh, that's what they want. We also have housing starts and building permits coming out tomorrow. Uh, Philly Fed, that'll be a big one that comes out. As far as econ news, uh, we'll keep track of that for you. Foot Locker paying out 38 cents uh, if you happen to own Foot Locker. So that's pretty cool. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have. Let's see if you have any questions. I'd be happy to help. Happy to help. Oh, you guys talking about those uh, beds? I don't know. I buy a cheap bed. I, you know, I like the bed I have. It's got a little kind of it's like bent so it kind of holds me in there i just like it you know it's all good um <laughs> um cool any stats on uh the percent of csx uh swings on earn did they not already report careful on that one uh i thought they reported uh, but I'll take a look. So you've got the rails. Remember, they come out right alongside the uh, banks. So you think about when the banks report, uh, you got rails in there as well. Let me see uh, CSX. Come on, what's the deal with this thing? Sorry, she's acting up on me. CSX rails. When do they report, by the way? I show tomorrow after hours, but it's not on my sheet there. Anyways, uh, they beat 78% of the time. Revenue 63% of the time. They beat there. Um, they don't often do guidance. I know guidance is going to be a big one here. They lowered guidance last quarter, um, but everybody's kind of doing well. I, the CSX is like, oh, they already reported. They did report there. Yeah. Squeezing out some more profits there. Uh, looking good, actually. Yeah, good for them. Average opening gap is uh, a half a percent. So why didn't I see this one? Hold on a second. Hang with me. You guys like your rails there? Sometimes I don't cover these, you know, names where people don't get too excited about them. Average, uh, so it's currently higher by 2.9%. Looking good. Yeah, all in all, from what I can see quickly here, uh, good earnings announcement. I have no problems with that one. Good job. Yeah. Oh, wow, lots of questions. Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, did Aurora Cannabis? No, I don't think they reported. I could be way off here, but I, think, I don't think they reported. Take a look here real quick for you. They re they, no, because they just reported back in September. They're not going to be for a while now. 
Uh, do you think Disney will swing tomorrow? Uh, yeah, you, you, I don't really think you'll see much out of Disney. It takes a lot to move that stock. It's not like that's all they do. Netflix streams, that's what they do. Disney obviously has got a lot going on there. Had a good day today. Uh, but after hours here, you got a small gap up on Disney. Looks like it's, uh, uh, as of now, hinting at opening around 132. So that's not bad. You got a small gap up there. Yep. Hey, Dustin, I guess there's no chance to be your customer while living abroad. You're not a U.S. Yeah, unfortunately, you, gotta be, uh, you have to be a U.S. citizen paying U.S. taxes. That's, that's the key thing there. You could be a resident alien if you're here in the States or working in the States, uh, but the government wants to make sure they're getting paid from you before you start investing, at least for what we can do. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Tangra's got it right. A little bit of a holding pattern for the market. I like it. Uh-huh. You just sold 10 of the 222 and a half uh, Apple calls October. Look at you. You sold 10, meaning you sold to buy them back? I'm going to guess that's what you meant there. Like you bought them previously and you just sold them out because they expire. Good job. I like it. Should be a nice winner then, right? <laughs> I love it. So uh, you're asking, will CCI break the new 52-week uh, high in the short term? Um, I don't think that's a stock you see turn around and head back to highs, no. Um, I don't know. Like, I can't say, I can't tell you, like, for sure, yes, no, it will, whatever. I don't think so. It's, it, the way it sold off there, people don't run back to stocks like that. Um, it had a great run. It's been up for a long time. People took their profits, and they're just waiting for this thing to settle down. Uh, at least the big money does, yeah. Dave Ramsey made you sell all your single stocks. <laughs> Hopefully for a profit, right? Uh, I don't know what the question is there. <laughs> um, did Zoom sell off because Facebook plans to compete? Uh, Zoom has just been sort of bleeding away there. You've got support coming up. The, from a technical perspective, you have no reason for people to get excited about the stock just yet. Around 60 bucks, just over $60 around the IPO price. I think you attract a lot of attention, but for now, you, there's just like, it's like seeing a car that you know is a little overpriced and then they lower the price a little bit and you're like, yeah, I'm not gonna go racing be over there to buy it because I don't think anybody else is gonna try to buy it. Then they drop it a little more and you go, I'm not gonna, yeah, maybe one or two people think it's a great deal and let them have it. But otherwise, you don't think a lot of people will go there. Then they slash the price by like five grand, and you're like, okay, I better be there first because there's gonna be a lot of people that think that's a good deal. That's kind of what Zoom's doing right now, if that's helpful. Well, I'm not gonna get into the Dave Ramsey comments. <laughs> I like the guy. I just, yeah, don't have anything to offer there. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, thoughts on Nvidia? We covered this the other day, yesterday actually, when it broke out there, price target raised. Um, I believe twice now. I believe somebody else also raised their price target. 250 is where people are at on that one. So analysts in general are pretty bullish. And from a technical perspective, you kind of have clear skies until the 220 range. So assuming nothing bad happens, you've got a great reason to believe in a possible uptrend there. Um, at least risk to reward is there. I mean, when you measure those sort of things, right, it's like, all right, I don't have to take a lot of risk. Got a potential for a big reward. We'll see what happens. You think semis break out or break down? They're not really basing, so it's hard to say. You can't uh, call that a breakout or a breakdown because they're not really in a little sideways base. I think it's more of the same, to be honest with you. Unfortunately, the trade nonsense is kind of holding them back from maybe continuing a consistent type uptrend. That's why it's been really sloppy there. So I, I wouldn't, if it, was, if it continued to be sloppy, I wouldn't think of anything of it, just part of it. Yeah. You got $500,000 in debt? That's Godspeed, man. <laughs> uh, thoughts on buying ARLP? You just want the dividends there. Um, I would look really closely at that one. It's a limited partnership as well. So to, to take a look at the account that you're considering buying into it. I'm not familiar with these guys. Uh, I see their limited partnership. I see they're having a tough run here lately. I don't have any opinion on that one. Um, do I like Chipotle? I like Chipotle, like the food, yeah. The stock, I, you know, what it's, whatever it is, but you the food? Yeah, big Chipotle fan. 
Um, in all fairness, do you really think the Fed and other central bankers are not trying to manipulate the market to avoid the business cycle of <laughs> to avoid the end of the business uh, cycle slash recession? Um, I don't know. I can't say like, yep, these guys are trying to push us into a recession. They say they're not. You have to, that's all I can go on. Um, I can give you the stats on it, and by their actions, they are do it. They will eventually do it, whether they want to do that or not. Uh, the stats are what they are. Did a great class for that one the past couple times uh, for our customers here in, during the weeks there to show what we're looking at there. We may cover it tomorrow too, just to kind of bring it back up again. But yeah, they're uh, they're doing a, a good job. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing a good job bringing the yield curve back up. If that's what they want to do. All right. I think I've covered it there. Uh, got to talk a little slower today. We covered a whole lot. Um, yeah, back to work for me. I hope you had a great time here watching. If you did, maybe hit the subscribe button. And hey, you know, thanks for watching. I really have nothing else to say. Thanks uh, for being here. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Hey, wait. Before you go watch one of our other great videos, have you had a chance to see our new Fin Tips videos? They focus on one topic at a time, covering investing, personal finance, and anything that can quickly help you with your dough. Best of all, we'll keep it real short, because we know time is money. Why should you choose Jazzwealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours.